So I'm not generally one to do an unboxing video, but I've never seen one done for any of the Synology visual stations, never mind the uh, more recent one that was released uh, this year, the 960 HD. So I figured I would give it a try. Um, please excuse the uh, crappy uh, camera recording, uh, cell phone camera recording, but what I have available for this, like I guess I don't normally do these kinds of things. So on the back, it looks like there's no actual tape. Just a cardboard clip out. And here we have the unit itself. We've got a getting started guide. This here are the plates for season mounting. So this one goes on the back of the unit, this one goes on to the back of your display, and then you bolt them together. And then in here we have an Ethernet cable, we have some screw hardware, and we have a power brick with a US style adapter. I'm going to put the phone down for a second because I'm going to need both hands to clip this in. Alright, clipped in, and do the cable tie, and power. By the way, what kind of 12 volts, 3 amps, if it focuses. They claim this unit only uses 7.5 watts under load, so we'll see what happens. Now for the unit itself. It is quite small. I think it's more plastic than metal. Um, so on this side you've got a USB 3 where you could hook up like a flash drive for the purposes of saving recordings out for your security guys. Um, you've got two ports for keyboard and mouse. And uh, this is not my end solution, but for the moment for testing I have a cut keyboard and mouse here. And we'll plug these in. On the front, we have a couple of lights. Over on this side, you've got audio in and out plus the power button. On the back, we've got Ethernet. And then this, the, the side jack, I believe, is the one that does the 4K output, and this one does 1080p. And plug in the Ethernet. Plug in the power. And then plug in HDMI. This is just going into the input on the TV I've got here. And On green light, and no,
You'll have to excuse, excuse all the reflections on the uh, TV. Land light is blinking. Well, actually, that's probably the switching rotation is probably not good. For... So it takes a little while for it to boot up, huh? Something's happening. And we now have a screen that looks very much like Synology's uh, DSM as well as it's the same kind of login as um, their Windows app has. Uh, so I'm going to not show you the login information. Put the phone down for a second. So I've spent the last mm, 20 minutes at least trying to get this thing to log in. Uh, and it has not succeeded. Uh, on the server, it shows that it logs in, but in the, on the, the client, it complains about login failure. Now, one thing I noticed is that the uh, firmware version is behind, so I'm going to try updating that and then see if maybe that works. So, browse the phone, okay, upgrade, it take 10 to 20 minutes, okay. And I'm not going to make you all sit through this, so I'm going to pause it again. This is the uh, next screen that it switched to after thinking about it for, uh, I don't know, a good five minutes. And uh, one thing I'll note is that there is no ability to have this box just download its firmware update directly from Synology. Instead, you have to download the PAT file, put it on a USB stick, and then manually load it through the USB on the device. It would be nice if you could actually do it just directly over the web. And I'm going to pause it again. And lo and behold, it's working after the firmware update. So in the future, if you have one of these, make sure you update the firmware when you get it. So that's the default widget set there. I am not making use of home mode if I and there's no other op. Well, of course, I have this logged in as a um, surveillance only, not a manager, so it's probably why it doesn't have anything else. So we'll turn off the widgets. Now, information. So here we can see. Uh, it doesn't matter what the serial number is. Um, three gigs of RAM, four cores. Um, I had to manually set the time zone. And that Cruiser Micro is the disconnect that. That's what I used for the firmware update. And then you can see the ancient keyboard that I'm using and the Logitech mouse receiver. And now we will go into settings. So this gives you info on the LAN. Um, should be familiar if anybody, if you're familiar with DSM, you can see it's got gigabit ethernet for its port. So time here is where 
I had to change the time zone display. Now you'll note that A, it notices that there's nothing connected to HDMI 2 and it defaulted HDMI 1 with 1080p. So we're going to try switching that to 4K. Save. Restart. And it's rebooting. Now I also set it up that it should try to automatically log back in with the security operator's ID, so we'll see what happens. And at the moment, it's in the upper corner. And that seems to be not happy. Unless it's still trying to start up. So mouse can't so it seems to be not liking 4k mode what happens if I pull this and then Plug the HDMI back in. And it is still stuck. Let's put it in cleaning the only port. don't have the virtual keyboard we don't have any of the settings there. What happens if I reboot it with just well, I'll do a full power off with it on the 4K port and let's see if it comes up that way. screen is a good sign. I will pause it while it boots. Alright, so it finally booted back up and we're in. But I think it reverted back to 1080p. No, it says 13. If I hit display on the TV, actually, it does show that it's in 4K mode. So, didn't do well with trying to set it without a full reboot. And so other things in here, video, customized reference frame, not really sure what that's for, sign in, I turned on all of these, were all defaulted to off, and I turned all of them on. I'm not using the proxy, and then Maybe I shouldn't have shown that. Um, 
So, that's the uh, settings. So what all we got up here? We've got no external devices, which makes sense. That's the virtual keyboard. We have messages, which if you're familiar with some surveillance station, you'll know. Uh, this is user settings. So under options, you have um, same sort of DSM standard stuff that you normally get for user settings. And then this turns off the widget. And then as we saw, here are, here are the settings. So then we come over here and recordings opens up. You can see it's showing all the available recordings. IP camera shows various cameras. Timeline is the usual timeline. A couple of the cameras, like the one pointing at the ceiling, is testing before it gets deployed. And then here is what would probably be used by the security operator most of the time. And that is having it just sitting there displaying the live view. And right click to get back out of that. And so that is about it for quick intro to the uh, Synology VS960 HD and um, say it's the first time I've played with one um, and the idea here is it's going to be used for a uh, uh, front desk to have the display up showing a bunch of the uh, cameras being recorded by the system and testing it out here at home first as to get familiar with it and hope this was helpful let me know thanks cheers